often said that the best things in life are free, and yet keeping up to date with the latest games isn't easy on the wallet. With development fees growing and piracy thriving, rising costs are inevitable, but the future heralds the rise of free-to-play gaming. With complimentary PS3 shooter Dust514 showing that full games need not be costly, here's our guide to free-to-play gaming. You're about to jump into a galaxy of opportunity, wealth, destruction and death. Whilst free-to-play gaming has seen a rise in recent years, it's been around longer than you might think. The first notable free-to-play games began to appear in the 1990s, with PC MMOs such as Funcadia and RuneScape, as well as web browser-based pet simulators like Neopet. These games were entirely free, instead taking profit through prominent advertising and paid add-ons. With the success of these early examples, other developers soon saw the perks of this innovative new way of releasing games. Not only would the system avoid the risk of gamers lacking high system specifications, but publishers could tackle piracy head-on by doing away with hefty entry fees. After initial free-to-play games exceeded expectations, the unique release model became attached to such games as EA's Battlefield Heroes and ID Software's Quake Live. While World of Warcraft had already introduced gamers to the controversial concept of microtransactions, the system soon became intrinsic to free-to-play titles. As well as a growing roster of releases from large publishers, indie gaming began to embrace free-to-play gaming as a way of supporting creative freedom. However, above anything else, it's the rise of casual gaming on tablets and mobiles that has brought free-to-play gaming major prominence. The success of titles such as The Simpsons Tapped Out and Angry Birds has shown how successful the model can be. I spent a thousand dollars? Oh well, I'll just tell them that my kid did that. Today, free-to-play gaming is continually on the rise, and many games on Valve's Steam service cost nothing. It's not just PC gamers getting a good deal, as PS3 shooter Dust514 brings free-to-play gaming to consoles in a big way. Set within the same universe of EVE Online, Dust514 allows players to take the fight onto the battlefields of New Eden. However, accessing the best items requires spending real money within the online market. Whilst parting with your cash in Dust514 is completely optional, this kind of hidden charge has led to questions over whether or not free-to-play games are free after all. The core gameplay of Dust514 can be enjoyed without parting with a single penny, but it's easy to see why free-to-play gaming continues to achieve detractors. For many, the reliance on spending money to unlock upgrades and items throws up questions about whether paying players will have an unfair advantage. Worse still, the freedom to simply buy your way to an unlocked set of skills could potentially take skill away from gaming. The reliance on advertising and premium memberships also raises concern, and with some free-to-play games taking money from advertising rather than gamers, the quality of finished products could take a dip. Despite these concerns, free-to-play gaming still offers considerable perks. Indie developers can continue to peruse unique concepts, while gamers can try new games without committing first. While current free-to-play games have proved popular, the extent to which the divisive form of gaming will grow remains unclear. With Microsoft and Sony both experimenting with many upcoming titles, free-to-play gaming will continue to evolve as we boldly go into the next generation of consoles. With PCs and mobile devices continuing to thrive on free games, free-to-play gaming is more popular than ever. However, the contentious business model will continue to court controversy, and publishers need to ensure that the quality of gaming isn't affected by intrusive adverts or unbalanced microtransactions. Whatever the future holds, let's hope that there is such a thing as a good free deal.